Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today is another episode of Tutorial Tuesday and today we're going to be talking about subsurface and it's more like an introduction to subsurface so just in case you have no idea about subsurface today we're going to go right from the basics all the way to the top. We'll talk about these things in both Maya and Blender. So first of all let's talk about skin. So while we draw this graph of skin, I'll go ahead and explain subsurface to you. So subsurface is when light penetrates through an object and diffuses around the surface of that object. So let's say this is our skin by default. Here is probably the very last part of your skin, which is called the subcutaneous tissue, right? So I'm just going to hash this out because we don't really deal with that. Here is going to be like the dermis. So I think this is the spelling. And here is the epidermis, right? So here is the dermis, here is the epidermis, and within this part is where you have your subdermis, all right? So here is within, I guess that should be within the subdermis, right? So how this thing works is simple. Light comes all the way from here, bounces through here, is scattered around these parts, right? And, you know, goes off as well. So once light comes in, it bounces around here. And there are certain things that actually control how these things work. So if you're going to look at this from the you know shading point of view it simply means that you have a skin or you have a material and this material needs to have something called a sub surface amount or you know intensity weight depending on what you call it and you also need a sub surface map or a sub surface you know color so this is the color that is, you know, scattering that light. That This is the color that actually bleeds from the, the light to the shadow. That is the color that does that. Or the color that you get to see when the light starts scattering. And then you have something called the subsurface radius. Right. This is essentially the same in almost every rendering engine, almost every rendering app alike so this is essentially the same these are just the very basic so if this is set to zero there is no subsurface but if it is set to one then it means that there is subsurface if this color is set to white you probably don't see anything but if this color is set to a certain color if there is a map driving this particular color that is the color that you get to see individual stuffs like this you can use maps to actually drive them whenever light is bouncing through an object like uh, the monkey suzanne head which you have here it is going to actually start from the thinner surface all the way to the you know thicker one all right so i will just simply uh go ahead and show you guys how you can do both in cycles and how you can also render this using eevee and speaking about eevee once you're doing pbr you need to also take into account that most pbr always use something called the translucent right so most pbr actually use things like this so keep that in mind when you're working with you know pbr all right so let's just get started and let's you know talk about this thing so first things first we have susan's head here and I'm just going to simply go over to this part. So let's just confirm that we are using cycles. So I'm just going to switch to cycles, come through, add the material. And this is like the best material in the world. Next thing which we need to do, we have to go over to shading. All right. So directly here where we have shading, you would notice that we have exactly those set of things which I talked about. The color, which is where the map goes to the subsurface. All right. This is the strength or the weight of the subsurface and the radius. We're going to leave the radius the way it is. And I'm just going to uh, select this object, press the period on my keyboard just to zoom right in. Next thing I want to do is actually subdivide this. So you can subdivide by clicking here, coming here, adding your subdivision, or you can just simply click this, press Ctrl 2 on your keyboard, click on this tiny button there, and you know increase that. So because we're not in the layout, we cannot see that. But I'll go ahead and just increase this by three and also increase this by three just to have a, small, uh, a much more smoother surface. All right. So with this done, I would simply increase this all the way to one and you don't see anything. First of all, let's jump right into rendering and now you can see what we have. You don't see anything, but you can see we have some sort of diffusion happening around, all right? So next thing we need to do is to go over to this part where we have the subsurface color and I want to choose something that looks like this. 
all right so now i've selected this with this weight up to one you're beginning to notice that our object is a little bit more jelly like shiny you know you're beginning to see some kind of skin happening there now why you don't really see that is because the light itself is not reflecting on the object so i'm just going to select this light hold down g on my keyboard and position this light a bit closer okay so we are having this right here so if i rotate this object you can now see that we're having light you know passing through this object and it is now diffusing along this path all right you can see that redness there so if i select this object and start turning this down so if i turn this down just a little bit you begin to see that we're not having as much details as we're having so this is now responsible for what the subsurface is so i talked about using materials to actually drive this so let's say you have materials that you've painted you want certain parts of your object to actually have subsurface and not all the parts so if you want to confirm how you can do these things i already explained to you guys in previous videos and i'm also going to do that in this video whenever a color map is set to black it simply means that nothing is going to happen within that area wherever a color map is set to white then it simply means you know you're going to get a hundred percent of whatever effect you want to do so for this i'm just going to simply come through hold down shift and press a go over to texture within this texture i would decide to pick any texture that actually suits me so i'm going to pick a verona and i'm going to drop this here and i want the black and white of this of this object right i want this black and white to actually drive this so i'm plugging that there and you can see within this part we are beginning to have that feel there right so you can use any map at all or you can use certain maps to actually drive this i can turn this all the way down and you know change this you know and you begin to see that the parts that have black we don't get to see those things and the parts that has white we get to see more subsurface happening there and so this is how you can drive maps with subsurface all right so you can go ahead paint out this map in any app of your choice and then you can use it so now we're done with this and we've actually talked about how you can use map maps all right to drive your subsurface let's go ahead and talk about how you can render this using Eevee. So for Eevee, what we need to do is just simply grab onto this object, switch over to this part where we have the scene, change this from uh, cycles and switch it back to Eevee. First things you would notice is it goes black or it, you know, jumps back into this color and where's our subsurface. All these things are done properly, but yet we cannot see it because Eevee is PBR, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on subsurface and yet we still don't see it as much as we want. What you need to do, remember, when I start talking about this, I said you need to always remember that once you're working with PBR materials, you need to turn on translucency. Translucency would actually tell the renderer that this is how much further we want light to travel into this object. So we are going to just simply select this, go over to the properties here, scroll all the way down. So I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to turn on subsurface translucency. And with subsurface translucency turned on now, you can see that we have our object and you can see that very nice, you know, subsurface scattering happening around this object. Really, really cool, isn't it? All right. So you can see that happening directly on our object as it is. So this is really cool and it is something that I guess you guys should, you know, try. And I probably think I've given some sort of good ideas to how, you know, subsurface works. Now, for the guys that are using other rendering engines, just to clarify that these things are not different. They are entirely the same across the board. I will go ahead and show you how you can do this in Maya. And if you're working with Arnold, then probably you're going to get a better understanding about how this thing works. All right, guys, so we have Maya here and we have Suzanne the monkey right here. And what I've done is I've gone ahead to just set up the light and also set up this. And we have attached the Arnold standard surface. So by default, Arnold is the default renderer that comes with Maya. And that's why we're using that for the guys that want to understand how these things work. And directly here, you're going to see that we have something called subsurface and you can see the similarities. So let's just get Blender out and let's look at them together. And you can notice, I'm just going to bring this here and just simply reduce this like that. Okay, so you would notice that directly here we have weight, which is this weight, which we talked about earlier. We have the radius, which is this radius, and we have the color. All right, so we have one, two, three, and they are all similar with what you can have 
with uh, Blender. But now in Arnold, we have something called scale. Now this scale actually scales between this and these other uh, maps. So let's say you have a map here and you have another one here. You can use this scale. I think it's going to make more sense when I get to explain. So first things first, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this, which is turning the weight on. I'll go over to diffuse because we don't want any form of diffusion right now. And we don't want any form of specularity. So I'm going to just turn those down and we have this now next thing which i'm going to do is i'm going to select color of red probably we should just find something that is in between that looks like this i think all right so something like this will be fine then we're going to go ahead and use this and also one other thing you need to know is by default arnold actually has some presets that you can use so in case you want to just quickly speed things up you can simply use these things and you know go ahead and work with them and directly inside here it also has a couple of them that you can also use to quickly speed things up so once we have this here i'm just going to zoom this right in and let's just position this and hit the render button here so once i press the render i think we need to zoom back just a little bit let's stop this so that it doesn't uh, crash my so i'm just going to go ahead and stop that zoom this backwards a little bit also uh, let's take a look at this and zoom this backwards a little bit like that and let's press the playback button now you would notice that nothing is significantly happening now the reason is because we don't have any other color mixing with this so at this point if you remember when we started talking about these things i said you have your epidemics your sub epidemics and all that so directly from here i can choose red and now you're going to notice that we have something in the mix all right so you're beginning to see that subsurface thing going on around there if i start cranking this down all right if i start cranking this down you will see that this other color becomes more dominant and we begin to see that there if i crank this all the way up you would also notice that they are now blending together to give me this i can click on this and switch over to green to get something way different from what i have all right so you can see that we're having uh, that there so with this done i will just simply go back to red and now let's talk about the scale now with the scale if i choose this scale and i start cranking this scale all the way up you begin to notice that this particular color becomes more dominant and if i crank this scale a little bit lower you see that these other color is more dominant so this is a good reason why you definitely need maps to actually drive uh, this particular thing so for this now i would simply select this and i would like to let's go ahead and pause this i would like to just simply select this and hide it so that we can have something and i'm also going to put this in a bucket and next thing which i'm going to do is just simply select this other one and increase the intensity by let's say by extra 10 which is going to be 30 and already you would notice that we're seeing some scattering happening around this area right you can see that scattering happening there so once i go ahead and press the playback button because we don't have the dome light which actually hides these things so because we don't have the dome light now you can now see that we'll have this scattering going on around here and this is essentially how you do it for almost every rendering engine so if you're working with pbrs just keep in mind or bear in mind that you need to turn on some sort of translucency for Marmoset, you have to turn on translucency. If you're using EV, you also have to turn on translucency. So this is something you should keep in mind. And by default, this is the, like the basics of how you can work with this thing. So if you have maps that you want to drive with these things, you can just plug in those maps and you can use those maps to actually, uh, you know, drive these meshes and see how they all work for you. So I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Tell me which of them kind of makes you understand this thing better. If you want me to make more videos about these things, tell me about them in the comment section and I will be most excited to do these things for you guys. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, turn on notification. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know once we upload a new video. And until I see you guys next time with a tutorial, updates, review, Free Friday, Tutorial Tuesday, Tips and Tricks, things like this. Peace.